Hello, welcome to episode 23 of the Creative Entrepreneur Interview Series. I'm your host, Bob Baker, and this is really going to be an interesting one. It's very different. If you're a type of person that doesn't like having to choose a niche or you've always resisted having to you know focus on one thing uh, or you just like doing a variety of things and would like to incorporate them into your business you are definitely going to want to listen to this interview with Emily Wapnick she is someone that uh, caters to what she calls multi potentialities that's right it's people that have a variety of interests and want to incorporate them not only into their life, but possibly their business and make money from those if possible. So it's a very unique story and a perspective, and uh, I think you'll get a lot out of this one as always. Before we get to that, I got to ask, are you on the VIP list? Are you on the Creative Entrepreneur VIP list? If not, why not? It's really easy to do, and it comes with a lot of perks. For one, you get a big free sample of my new book called The DIY Career Manifesto. It's the unconventional guide to turning your talents and know-how into a profitable business. I'd love to give you that. Also, every time I upload a new interview, I will send you an email, so you'll be the first to know when some new inspiration is out there for you to either watch or listen to. And also, this is the first time I've mentioned this, but uh, I'm hoping this year to maybe start doing some creative entrepreneur uh, live events or maybe some uh, online mastermind groups, a few things that I'm churning over in my active mind that I like to offer you in the coming months. So I just want you to stay in touch and uh, not miss any of these interviews, be able to read the book for free. So all you have to do is go to DIYCareerManifesto.com. Yes, that's the name of the book, DIYCareerManifesto.com. Uh, there are a number of uh, links there that will show you how to get on the list. Just enter your uh, name and email address, click submit, and you are all set. It's real easy. Just take a moment and do it right now before you get distracted. And of course, that's also the website where all of these interviews are housed and kept for safekeeping for generations to come. All right, let's move on to this week's interview. Welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur. I have got an interesting guest here. Uh, it's uh, Emily Wapnick. Uh, hi, Emily. How are you? I am great. How are you? Fantastic. And uh, um, now, wh where are you located? I don't think I even established that before we, when we chatted earlier. Are you in I'm in Chicago you're right in now. Chicago. All right. Yeah. So you're a Midwest gal, too. I'm in St. Louis. <laughs> Well, not originally, but I'm, I will be, you know, for the next year and a half okay, <laughs> at cool. least. So Cool. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, let, me, let me tell you the story of how I actually discovered you. So last summer I did, a, or yeah, early last su summer I did a number of things. One was I started this interview series, The Creative Entrepreneur, and sort of combined with that I started writing a book that I've been running to write for a long time called The DIY Career Manifesto. It's a book that I've, I mentioned at the top of the show. I give away a sample of it, um, and it's all about sort of my unconventional journey to self-employment. Self but I was doing some research on even though I knew at an early age what my sort of my callings were or passions were, a lot of people, you know, are just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I was sort of doing some research to look for some resources to help people figure that out. And I just, and there are things out there like the passion test and, you know, a lot of well-known sort of re resources. Um, but I, I discovered a blog post that you wrote that's something along the lines of, why some of us don't have one true calling and why that's the that's a good thing or something. I think it was a guest blog post. Why that, we're better off that way. Yeah, why we're better yeah, why we're better yeah. off that way. And that led me to your website, which is puttylike.com. And I started looking and you you cater to a group of people that you refer to as multi potentialites. Is that how you do I, how am I pronouncing that right? Multi potentialites, you got it. So, 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 this is really interesting to me. So, l let me let me ask you: How do you explain the philosophy? Yeah, what does that mean? And why did you start this site? How it applies to your life? Kind of give me yeah, a little bit about your background before we go into these questions. I think it's fascinating. Sure. Uh, well, a multi potentialite. I'll give you the definition first. So, it's someone with many interests and creative pursuits in life. So that's a pretty broad definition, right. um, but I like it that way because I want it to be kind of an inclusive space. Um, but it's basically, you know, someone who doesn't feel like they have one true calling, like there's many different things that they could do and want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we live in this culture where we're really encouraged to specialize and to, you know, find your one true calling. It's this sort of grand myth that we've all grown up with, right. that we all have like one thing that we're supposed to do. Um, and I wanted to create a community of people who kind of rejected this myth and instead they said, okay, well, 
I don't want to just pick one thing and deny all of my other passions. Instead, I want to build a life around my many interests, you know, find ways of integrating all those different passions into my life. Which I think is very cool. Yeah. And I mean, I've done that to a great extent myself. And so what are, what are your, some of those passions have been in your life, the variety of things that you've done over the years, just to give people an idea? Yeah. So growing up, I mean, in when I was in high school, I was into, you know, I liked math class and English class and class and art class. I was really into music, though. I played the guitar and sang in a band. I had a, a punk band called Frustrated Telephone Operator or yeah. FTO for short. Awesome name for a band. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and I got really into songwriting. Um, and then I learned how I taught myself web design because, you know, the band needed a website. Um, and then I started doing some freelance web design. And when I went to college, I studied art, music. Um, I'm, I ended up, like, specializing in film and, and producing some nice short films that went on to festivals and stuff. Um, and then I hit this point where um, – I started to kind of lose interest in that a little bit, and I took I randomly took a law class. Um, it was a completely different a, yeah, gear, completely. Direction. I mean, it was yeah. it was like a communications law, so there was some overlap, you know, like like copyright policy and stuff like that. But um, I just was fascinated by this way of looking at the world because it's it was just so different from anything that I had done. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided to go to law school. Um, and I'm originally from Canada. School's a lot more affordable up there. So I, you know, I was kind of lucky in that regard. Um, but yeah, you know, art, music, film school, law school, um, and then kind of entrepreneurship. I feel like I've always been interested in psychology, uh, you know, in kind of like a, a casual way. Mm -hmm. um, other interests of mine, I'm actually currently taking a chemistry class wow. at a, a community college because I've, I've become interested in health and nutrition and, and functional medicine and stuff. So, um, And then music has come back around for me again recently. That's very, that's very, very, very cool. And I look, I'm on your About Emily uh, page <laughs> on puttylike.com. It says, I don't like labels. If I had to describe myself, I'd probably use a combination of artist, entrepreneur, writer, speaker, and coach play a few different instruments. Yeah, you mentioned the chemistry class, design a website or two, but all that could change tomorrow. So <laughs> so let me ask you this, though. So, so I know, and I'm sure you you delve into it in your website and your different uh, programs and stuff that you offer, but it's one thing to have a lot of different interests. It's another thing to sort of like support yourself doing a variety <laughs> of things. So have you been successful at like making a living and covering your expenses and, and, you know, living, I mean, or basically earning a, a living by switching gears. Yeah. I mean, for a long time while I was a student, uh, web design was my main source of, you know, income. Um, you know, my parents helped me a little bit while I was a student too, I'll be sure. honest. But, um, now I'm, I've got, you know, putty like, which is completely self-sufficient supports me entirely. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I do, even within that business, it's very multifaceted. So I do some coaching, I create products, I write books, um, I run the Putty Tribe. Um, we've got some t-shirts that are coming out soon. There's like a lot going on within that. Um, so, so that's kind of, it's what I call a, a group hug career because it allows me, you know, it's kind of like a group hug of my different interests. Right. Um, that's so, yeah, fun. that's fantastic. And so the, the, the name, uh, I think you explained it on here, but putty like the, re the reason mm -hmm. that you call it that is because putty is a uh, moldable, malleable, I think you use that yeah. term, substance. And so that changes kind of, shape. It's a good analogy, I guess. Yeah. To what to what you're talking about. How long have you had that site or this kind of this multi ap appealing to multi potential lights? How, how long has that been an activity? Yeah, it's been say like three and a half years. OK. Cool. And so I always like to be, yeah, ask people their business model. I think you pretty much just touched on it here, but it's like a variety of things that you offer. Um, it's like community. There are, there's a book too called, is it called Renaissance Business? Is that, yeah. something, is that a self-published book? Or? It is. Yeah. Awesome. I'm a, I'm a big proponent yeah. of self-publishing. I make a living as an author and most of my material is by far has been cool. self-published and, and uh, so good for you. Uh and uh, so, so there, yeah, just again, yeah, maybe explain um, what your like, so what, what streams of income, I guess you bring sure. in, you said there's a tribe or, or a community. Coaching. Yeah. Yeah. So the main source of the main revenue stream right now is the Putty Tribe, which is a community of about 200 multi-potentialites from around the world. 
um, who, you know, we've got like this really active, wonderful forum where people ask questions and help each other brainstorm ideas and, you know, help each other deal with various things from like kind of personal issues to business issues and career stuff. Um, and we have what we call huddles, which are little, um, we, we run them on Google Plus Hangouts. And there's just, you know, six or eight of us in a group and we brainstorm our different projects and we run workshops that the members lead for each other. Um, so the Putty Tribe is kind of, it's it's like the main hub right now. Um, then we've got uh, Renaissance Business, which is um, the ebook that you just mentioned. So that's a, another revenue stream. Um, I just recently got back into coaching. I was doing it pretty – that was my main – you know, that's kind of like how I got started. And then I sort of cooled off on it. I needed to focus on other things, um, but I missed it. So I'm doing a little bit of coaching on a limited basis. Um, what else? What else? Um, I, I've gotten into speaking recently. So um, I just had a big speaking gig in Colorado, and I'm going to one in California at the end of March to speak at a college out there. Yeah, what, um, what, so that's kind of a new one. What type of events or organizations hire, would hire would bring you in to speak? Would, yeah, it? I've spoken at a couple high schools, um, and I'm speaking at a college. So that's kind of like my typical audience. But the the talk that I did in um, in Colorado that was actually really interesting. I did two out there. One was for parents on how they can support their multi-potentialite children. And the other was for teachers on how they can support their multi-potentialite students. Um, and so that was really, really fun. This is really a specialized niche because I don't, I, I imagine, did you like seek out information for people like you and be found it hard to, to, to find? Yeah, um, there was, there was some, um, there are a couple of books that have been written that are really good. Um, and you know, if you look at, if you look at through, throughout history, there are, what, what are called polymaths or, you know, the Renaissance person, right? So right. there are all these people like Ben Franklin and, um, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, obviously, and um, Isaac Newton and, you know, these big names. And you can kind of, um, some people have talked about them in the context of doing many things or having many passions. Um, but it wasn't really, it was kind of this unnamed thing, this, this thing that I noticed that there are people out there like me who have trouble just choosing one thing and don't want to choose just one thing. Right. Um, and so my idea was, you know, what if we all kind of bonded together and helped each other out and made it sustainable? Right. Um, and were you surprised that you attracted so many, I mean, three and a half years? Yeah. Relatively, I mean, that's, well, that's a modest amount of time, but I, I mean, I've been at this for 20 years to develop, you know, my my reputation online as the music marketing guy. And so three and a half years is still a good, healthy amount of time. But were you surprised by all of them? Or were you like, well, of course, there's a lot of us out there. You already knew that? <laughs> no, I, I was definitely surprised. I really didn't know whether, I mean, it's kind of the classic thing is every multi-potential, I wonders if they're, they're the only one out there like this. Right. And I definitely felt that way. And I was like, I wonder, you know, and I, I kind of just had this feeling like maybe it would resonate with some people, but the response has been really amazing. And I still, like, I, I constantly get emails from people being like, whoa, there's nothing wrong with me. Right. I, I didn't know that there was anyone else out there like this. And, and that, that's part of the reason that I created the Putty Tribe was just like, yeah, there are a lot of people out there like this, not just me. And I, I'd like you to be able to connect with them, too. Yeah, that's a pretty I mean, a powerful thing. If people feel like they're mm -hmm. misfits or they don't have a community of people that support them and you provide that. I mean, that's there's a kind of a, a, a great you know, take away right, right there. If you're feeling out of place, there probably are other people feeling yeah. the same way. If you can create a way to support them and have mm -hmm. everybody hang out together, <laughs> yeah. you're doing yeah. good stuff. Well, that's fantastic, Emily. Um, and just on your other question before about um, supporting yourself as a multi-potentialite, the funny thing about that is that there are so many different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's like, there's what I was talking about, you know, creating a business or a project or something that is very multifaceted and allows you to integrate your different interests. And then there are people who like having things separate and have like, you know, two or three discrete revenue streams or businesses or careers. Um, and then there's someone who like has a day job that they really enjoy that leaves them lots of free time to explore their other interests on their off time. So, right. you know, the, the main point is that you get to jump into your various interests and support yourself at the same time. And how you do that is kind of up to you. Right, right. And in the, actually in the DIY Career Manifesto book that I mentioned, I, I said that while I totally – I think every it's, it, the, the the path that you choose is totally up to you. It's different for every person. For me, I had this period in my twenties and my thirties when I went nuts 
with creativity. I was doing theater. I was doing stand-up comedy, improv comedy. Uh, actually, those are my paintings on the wall behind me. I yeah, they're visual. awesome. Thank you. I played music. <laughs> I, I published a local music newspaper. So there was a period where I like did everything that seemed like it'd be fun. I just did it. I took action on it. However, I was financially, I was kind of struggling. I was always just getting by. And for me, I think it was making the choice to focus on the books uh, because I was drawn to it and I felt it had the potential to build a career. And I did, but I continued to do the other things part time. But I, I, for me anyway, I had a focus on something uh, to, 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 to build up the income to, to get that my financial foundation in, right. in, in, in place. So, but I, I love the idea of being able to switch. switch yeah. Gears. I mean, I don't think that all of your interests need to um, produce income. You know, I think right. that. Certainly some of them are going to be more, um, I don't know, more profitable than, yeah, yeah, than others. Um, And it's just, you know, it's important to be aware of like which interests are bringing in the money and make sure you spend enough time on those. But, you know, there's no harm in jumping around and and doing your other things on your on your off time or whatever you want to call it. (laughs) I like that philosophy. Cool. All right, Emily, I'm going to jump into my official list of questions now. I like to ask every guest. And, uh, you know, you've lived, obviously, a colorful, creative life. Um, and you're, you know, supporting yourself with Putty Like and your other activities. And so if you had to, like, identify three factors that was really important for your growth and, you know, as part of your journey, what would those be? Yeah, so I'm not sure if these are factors as much as kind of experiences. Um, it can be whatever you but, want. Yeah, as yeah. Long as they were so important terms, to your to your growth and where you are now. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the first one was probably um, my last semester of law school. I did that semester abroad, and I was living in Denmark. Mm. Um, and it was kind of a hard time for me. I felt very isolated. I didn't, you know, all the other. People in the program were a lot of them were Europeans, and law school there you go to you go to law school when you're a lot younger. So I felt like a little bit disconnected from like this party culture that was happening in the dorms around me, right. um, and just kind of disconnected from the culture. And um, I was at this point in my life where I didn't want to become a lawyer, and I knew that, and I was starting to get interested in entrepreneurship. And so I just kind of decided like I'm going to get to I'm going to get to Copenhagen, and I'm going to. Um, start building a business and I'm going to just hustle. And um, so, you know, I was, I was really generally unhappy, but as, as a result of that, I really poured myself into putty, like into building the site and launching the site. And um, I spent so many hours just in my little dorm room working on that. Um, So, you know, I had, I had kind of an awful time, an awful five months, but um, something really great came out of it. So, so sometimes yeah. frustration can lead lead you to take action or to, to make your life better, take it in a new direction. Yeah, right? frustration, loneliness. <laughs> it was also, I was meeting all these amazing people online who were so interesting. And um, so that was a weird contrast with my real life. Right, cool, um, cool. But so. then, yeah, so that was in fall of 2010. Um, and then I moved back to Montreal, which is where I'm from. Um, and I decided I wanted to move to Portland, Oregon because, you know, I was thinking about where I wanted to run this business, where I wanted to live. And there are a lot of bloggers from Portland. Yeah. Um, a lot of people that I was starting to become friends with and it just seemed like a great place, even though I'd only been there once because, um, I went with my mom many, many years earlier. Um, so I decided I wanted to go to Portland. So I moved back home with my mom for five months and I just did, I took um, a couple web design projects that paid a lot but weren't super inspiring but I was like, I'm just gonna like buckle down and save a whole bunch of money and I'm gonna move to Portland. Um, and that's what I did. Um, so I moved there, uh, are you familiar with the World Domination Summit? Oh yeah, uh, uh, oh God, what's the guy's name, uh, Chris? Uh, Chris no, uh, Gillibo. Yeah, yeah, and he's, and he's uh, yeah, uh, he, I forgot what his website is called. Maybe, uh, it's a, it's um, the art of nonconformity. That's it. In the name of his book too, and he also did the one hundred dollars yeah. startup, and it's like mm-hmm. a huge annual event that like sells out thousands of people. I mean, yeah. Congrats to him for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris is a big influence of mine, um, kind of a mentor, and I was a big fan of his. And he was starting. He was doing the first year of the World Domination Summit in June, and I was like, well, that's a perfect deadline. That's happening in Portland, so I'll just you know I'll hustle and I'll I'll save as much money as I can, mm. and I'll work. On my business and on you know June, I think it was June 3rd I think it was around there I'll just I'll move to Portland 
I'll go to the World Domination Summit and then I'll look for an apartment <laughs> um, and I'll stay at the hostel. And that's what I did. And it was an incredible journey. And, you know, I met some of my best friends that I had never met yet. Um, and that, for that the first probably time. attracts a lot of t- type of people that, yeah, you would really bond with because they're yeah, all. Yeah, and people I already knew just from the blogosphere. And um, there was one guy, my friend Abe, he and I, we did a, a podcast for a very short period of time. And so we'd been working together for months and we met for the first time there. And, and I was staying at the hostel with all of these other people that I kind of knew already from online. And it was just so inspiring. Um, and uh, had a family friend who kind of put me up while I was looking for an apartment. And um, then, then, you know, I sort of hustled to write my book and launch that, and the coaching was getting off the ground, and things just went from there. So I would say that, yeah, first was my unhappiness in Denmark. Second was my move to Portland. <laughs> um, the third influence, I would say the third influence is probably my parents growing up. You know, they're, yeah, they're both real multi-potentialites. Um, uh, they're both university professors, but they always had all these different interests. Like my mom took art classes and painted, and um, I remember painting with her in the kitchen on weekends. And my dad is a—he's—he's he's a Scrabble champion, so he oh was always studying these weird words and going to tournaments and stuff. And he actually just wrote a novel, so they're—they're they're total multi potentialites. And oh yeah, you were heavily influenced, I'm sure. By, yeah. By that. And with, so I take it they were supportive of all of your various. <laughs> Efforts. Yeah, they were supportive yeah. for sure. Um, and, you know, also the fact that they're professors means that they really value education. Mm-hmm. So it was never like, you know, do something practical that's going to get you a job. It was, you know, for better or worse, it was like study whatever you want. Right. And like, so I was really lucky in that regard. Well, it's funny because you, uh, you you actually grew up obviously in a, in a supportive family. I mean, if you have your parents uh, being that way and supporting you, you know, to pursue a variety of things is a, is a huge impact but even in your video on your website you felt that even you felt the pressure of society to pick one thing and so can you imagine if you were with your if you were in a family where the where your parents were were telling yeah. you you got to do one thing this is you know don't don't quit your you know you need a day job something to fall back on all those cliches that we we heard what's your advice or how did you overcome that and what's your advice for people that don't have a supportive family you know or yeah. spouse or whatever uh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, that is part of, that's probably the main reason that I started Putty Like was, you know, community. For me, that's the answer. If you don't have support in your life, like as much as you can, try and get the negative people out. You know, it's hard with your family, right. but um, friends and stuff, anyone who's who's negative and is, is trying to tell you to like buckle down and, you know, just do one thing and doesn't want to encourage you to, to grow and to try all those other things that you're into. Um, and then try and surround yourself with the right people. And whether that's, you know, an online community or in, in your real life, um, you know, fr- other, other friends who are doing creative things, who are maybe stepping outside of that traditional path. Uh, but yeah, it's hard. It's, you're right. Even someone with me who had a ton of support, I still felt this tremendous pressure to, like, find my thing. Um, and I felt really, like, anxious and embarrassed whenever I would give something up and change directions for a long time until I hit this point where I was like, I'm not going to, I refuse to feel that way anymore. I mean, this is how I am and I'm not going to try and be something I'm not. Right. I don't want to have a thing. If it, yeah. <laughs> I think one of those resources that I was aware of, about the only thing that I was aware of before I ran into your site, I'm sure you're aware of, uh, Barbara Schur has a book called yeah. Refuse to Choose. Yeah, it's a great uh, book. And, and that's her, that's her, was her, her thing about, you know, yeah, you shouldn't pick the, the one thing. Um, well, uh, let's talk about, um, so we talked about some of the, the experiences and I guess milestones that, that, that led to your, uh, w- to what you're doing now, but let's talk about some challenge or a challenge. Uh, I was always like to find out how people overcome hurdles. So if you could identify a business or a creative challenge that you had to mm-hmm. face along the way and how you overcame it, what you learned from it, I, I would love to hear that too. Yeah, I'd say that when I was coaching, at first I took on pretty much anyone who wanted to hire me as a coach, um, and I didn't charge enough either. I mean, I was just getting started, so you know, you need to kind of figure out what you're doing and gain a bit of confidence. Um, but at a certain point, I there were it, some coaching students who were fantastic, and others that was like these, it just really wasn't a good match. Um, so I think that that was one of the biggest lessons I've learned is just to be a little bit more selective and to charge what you should be charging. Um, don't, you know, undervalue yourself. 
Yeah, that and that is a common thing. And I and I I go kind of in and in and out of. Uh, I limit the amount of like one on one consulting that I do with my either music marketing or mm-hmm. book marketing or whatever. Because um, I find if I do too much of it, it's a little draining. You know, as much as I like talking one on one with people, it does kind of take a lot of your focus and energy, and you want to deliver value to them. Um, but it is true. Some people will energize you and you're like, wow, I really enjoy talking to that person or helping them. And the other's like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, but yeah. I guess early on, you don't know what those, you don't know how to weed them out. I guess you just have to go through those experiences before you know what, what, to, what questions to ask or how to, I don't have people, I don't know how, how to, uh, weed, yeah, you weed can kind of, <laughs> once you know, once you know what you're looking for and you know how to like set your, set those expectations, it, it becomes easier to spot the good ones and to, mm-hmm. yeah, you can, you can kind of tell <laughs> pretty and early on. And then that thing about undervaluing yourself and, uh, yeah, that's a really common thing with newer entrepreneurs or people in creative fields in particular think, oh, I'm an, I'm just an artist or a musician and we don't you know we're starving or whatever and so but even you had to uh had to had to face that Mm -hmm. and then and realize i'm not i I need to be making more but but i guess what is it like i'm not experienced enough i don't deserve more money is that the the mindset early on when you're not charging enough or yeah i'm not i'm not sure what it is i think it's this idea that well partly like if it's fun and I enjoy it, I shouldn't be charging other people so much for it. Like, or right. maybe just kind of like a lack of confidence in your ability to deliver. Um, and if you charge less, then like, it's not as bad if you don't help, help them. So like, you know, I don't know right. what it is. It's a lack of confidence thing. It's funny sure. you hear that phrase a lot from people in the arts in particular who say, this is something I would do for free anyway. And right. so, but that doesn't mean you should be doing it for free. Right. And, right. and also like, especially in the arts as though it's like more noble, um, to not charge right. and like, and it's bad to make money. You know, it's, it's these ideas around like these negative ideas around making money, I think. Right, but I, I think you 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 probably agree with me that people that artists should get over that that whole yeah absolutely <laughs> they could charge what you're yeah. worth realize you deliver just because it's fun for you it's probably fun for the person who is you're delivering whatever is the music the coaching the the artwork the film the and, book whatever and it's so yeah and, and so yeah you 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 deserve to be compensated for that sure and work isn't I mean I feel like we grew up with this idea that work is supposed to be painful. Um, but I think we really need to break that down. Like, I think that if you're having fun, that's a good sign that you're doing what you're supposed to be, you know, like something that you're supposed to be doing and that you're good at it and that you're putting value out there. We should, we should create a society where you get paid more, the more you enjoy what you do. Oh, I think that'd be amazing. (laughs) Let's start that. Here's a new community for you. All right, Emily, here's another question. I just love asking. I just never know what kind of answers I'm going to get from this. So if you could, uh, if you could go back in time and have a have a talk with your younger self, and I, you seem like you're pretty young, anyways, it may not even be that. Many. I'm older than I look. Oh, I'm really? 29. 29. Oh my gosh, yeah. you're, you're 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 almost 30. I know. <laughs> so, so if you can go back, I don't know whether it's your high school or that time when you were over in mm-hmm. Europe in law school or whatever, and have a conversation with yourself and, and give yourself three pieces of advice. One is what you would do exactly the same what are, what you would completely avoid because you didn't you know realize that they were time wasters or whatever and then what you would add into the mix earlier because maybe at the time you didn't have the wisdom to know this is a thing you should be doing um, those are the three questions and so let's just take them one at a time or however many you want to answer but what would you do exactly or recommend to your younger self that you do exactly <laughs> the same I would tell my younger self to to listen to your heart and study all the different things that you're into and, you know, zigzag about as you please. Um, and you'll figure it out. It, you know, just because you pick something up and you let it go, doesn't mean you're not going to use all of those skills and experiences in kind of unconventional ways later on. Um, that's a, that's a great point. Cause I've actually talked about that before. So earlier I mentioned that in my twenties and thirties, I was always doing all these different things, right? I mentioned mm-hmm. theater. It was a video show that I hosted too on local cable. I didn't get paid a dime for, all these, they, they appeared at the time to be separate, just, you know, varied things that I, then I eventually decided to, to focus on the, on the books. But what I realized 
years later was that I used all those experiences came in handy for actually for my main business. When it came time to create YouTube videos, I had yeah. comfort looking into a camera because of all that, you know, those fun. And I did silly video things with with uh, with friends. When I went to do workshops, I had already done stand up comedy and theater mm -hmm. and I could speak to a crowd. So, yeah, all those things, those rich experiences, even though they didn't seem to be like, why am I doing all this stuff? It's amazing how they all come into play. It sounds like what you're saying. Yep. Yep. There. I mean, look at your backdrop right yeah, now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> These are just paintings I did in the past year yep. or year and a half or, or whatever. And I've been painting for 40 years off and on, you know. But thank you. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that, that out. So, yeah, the thing that you would do exactly the same, yeah, is zigzag and <laughs> and not re re refuse to choose. Um, so, cool. What, what, what else would you advise for your younger self? Uh, in terms of things that it, I did right? Either, or yeah, if, if you are, we can go on to what you would completely avoid if you, unless you get another one. For, yeah, so for things that I would avoid, um, I actually I couldn't think of anything because I, I feel like everything, I mean, even the hard stuff I grew from, you right. know, even all, I, I went through some hard times in high school. I was pretty insecure, you know, kind of really shy and all of that sort of dark stuff that happens when you're a girl in high school and um but all of it you know just like getting bullied as a kid for being weird like all that stuff makes you more interesting and and right. it can make you stronger as an adult so um yeah so, there's there's nothing really i can so, think of so you almost put that yeah that stuff in the category of just do exactly the same yeah and it's true you can answer yeah. the questions any way you want to it's it's and it's and it's, and it's true even the things that were uh seem negative yeah they made you who you who you are and and if you change them things would be a lot different <laughs> so uh, and i can't really you know i can't really point to one big mistake i've made in my business I, there were things that i tried that didn't work mm -hmm. um but you know you gotta you gotta experiment you gotta got a ship like Seth Godin would say right yeah. um, take 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 action what's been your and I guess this is totally off the off the, the the list of questions but when you built putty like what were some of the most effective things that you did like to draw track looks like you have a I guess you mm -hmm. have a WordPress site that you looks like you yeah. really developed well but has it been like guest blogging was it been interacting um, with I've, certain sites yeah what's been like a, a big win for it for you in attracting people yeah, I've done a little bit of guest posting, probably not as much as I should. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, Twitter was really huge. I met a lot of people on Twitter, um, and I made a lot of friends on Twitter too, which was awesome. I didn't realize that I would end up having this whole new group of friends and all this great yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, I'd say like Twitter was probably my biggest traffic generating strategy i guess trying to click the click your twitter button on my i'm own. not on twitter that often oh you're not okay um, no <laughs> you're not. Uh, i'm really not i like you know i get in there a couple times a day right. but um but to start i don't know for some reason i was getting a lot of traffic from twitter i followed certain people that i thought were cool um and kind of in similar areas and then they started following me back and we would retweet each other's stuff and then other people would start retweeting and it just it just was a way that um, things grew at first. Um, I think Facebook too has been um, pretty big. I think people just, I don't know, people see the idea of the multi-potentialite and I created a terminology page that people can link directly to if they want to be like, hey, this is what I am. You know, this is, mm -hmm. if you want to understand me, go right here and read this page. Um, so I think that a lot of it is word of mouth. People just like really resonating with the ideas and sending it to friends, sending the site to friends and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've done some guest posting though, and and I plan on doing more. <laughs> cool. And you've, it looks like you, you got a little thing here as seen in. You got the Financial Times, Huffington Post, yeah. Life Hacker. So you've gotten some nice. Yeah, there uh, were a few big ones. Um, yeah. yeah. And the site is well designed because yeah, a lot of people uh, don't do this, but uh, the smart the smart kind of online business people have a start here, like your first time here and you have a start here link at the, at the top for, for people that are there for the first time, which is really, so just bombarding them with it, with everything kind of give them a, right. an introduction. You got like a welcome video there, got your opt in to get some free <laughs> stuff to get on your mailing list, which is all, it's all smart, smart stuff, but this isn't a marketing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but workshop. I mean, you have a point here though, because I did integrate my background in web design, obviously into yeah. The business, you know, it came in really handy. One of those things that didn't seem like, they, yep. yeah, it just seems like a, a separate thing that worked. Um, any advice for yourself on what, you know, good stuff that you maybe could have uh, uh, mixed in earlier or done earlier? Yeah, I would say delegating <laughs> things and outsourcing. Hmm. 
getting a team on board. Um, I really waited a long time to do that. I waited until I launched the Putty Tribe, and I was like, I can't run this whole community alone. I need at least one or two people to help me out. Um, but I've recently just started outsourcing more of the stuff that, like the administrative stuff, mm-hmm. um, oh, cool. a lot of the back end stuff, and it's really nice. Um, and I wish I had, you know, it's hard to like relinquish control when it's something you care so much about, right. but. That's something I wish I had started doing earlier. Because I'm fiercely independent in DIY and to the point where, I, yeah, after 20 years or more of doing this, I should be delegating a lot, <laughs> it's hard. A lot more than I, uh, than I uh, do. But you, uh, but you have to, I guess you have to pick and choose. That's a whole other learning curve thing too. Like the first, your first attempts at working with an as, uh, assistant or VA or whatever, um, sometimes yeah, it's well, like I, feeling your way through it, right? I've found most of the people that I work with through the community, like through Putty Like, through the Putty Tribe. So that has been great. I've never gone to like, like Odesk or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just never had to. Right. Um, so like, for instance, uh, my our director of tribe happiness, that's his official title, okay. uh, his name's John, and he was one of the first Putty Tribe members, and I met him in a huddle, and I was like, that John guy, that guy's cool, I wonder if he would be interested in running this community with me, and so I got in touch with him, and things kind of went from there, and that's sort of how I've approached things, like I, I tend to have a radar out for, you know, like, who might be good for different kinds of um yeah. tasks and yeah that that's smart that's actually something i recommend to musicians and authors too and other and other, other is, is that uh because a lot of times people will complain oh I, I wish i had a publishing deal or a record deal or whatever because then i'd have this team of people helping me mm-hmm. and i get what they're where they're coming from but if you build your career and focus on fans yeah your fans will co-create mm-hmm. with you and you can and some of them will rise above they have to lead either a fan club or to, to be yeah. a, a big promoter whether it's just word of mouth and you know raving to your friends or taking on an official role like you described there but that's that's the, actually the best the, the best thing why go out and search for somebody you don't know than when they've self-identified themselves among your existing tribe right yeah Very- and, they're, and they care about the same cause you know they're mm-hmm. They, they're multi-potentialites themselves, so they get it, and I get them. Right. And, um, and they care about spreading this message and helping multi-potentialites kind of feel less alone and, and making it work. And Yeah, so. awesome. Perfect. Well, if, if you're uh, ready to go to the next question, another one I love to ask is a book that changed your life uh, and explain what, not only what that was, but why it did so. Yeah, we'll go with, I'm sure you've heard this one before, but I got to go with the four-hour work week. Okay. Tim, Tim, Ferriss, Tim Ferriss, right? Yeah. And what was it about, um, what particularly, what was it about <laughs> that one that really struck you? Or- Everything, you know, it was, <laughs> it, was it uh, I read it towards the end of law school. Um, like I said earlier, I didn't want to become a lawyer. Uh, I was starting to become interested in, you know, maybe starting a business, but I didn't know much about it. And then I found that book. Um, and I was like, this could be what I, I could do it like an online business, you know, and, and um, that really just set me down that path. I mean, then I kind of got into Chris Gillibo's work and um, that was really inspiring for me also. But um, yeah, the four hour work week uh, was, had a pretty profound influence on my life as it did <laughs> and the a, direction. As it did I a took. lot of, a lot of uh, people. Of course, it isn't literally about only working four hours a no. week. I think that's just a, fa- uh, a, a title. I think he actually, Tim Ferriss, wanted to call that book something like um, uh, uh, Selling Drugs or something. It was for, Drug Dealing for Fun and Profit, I think. Yeah, that was that was his <laughs> title he was recommending. And they did like a Google AdWords thing. Did you hear about, about this where the uh, – they he they ran his title and then uh, his his agent had another suggestion and the publisher had another suggestion and they ran a Google AdWords thing where they split test it yeah. and see how many click and and four hour work we get the most clicks and that's how they decided on the interesting yeah one. well I mean it worked out for him because now he's got like the four hour body and the four hour chef and he's like yeah. at the four hour you know it's like. <laughs> Uh, and I guess in one way, so in one way he's known as the four hour guy, but even he he didn't choose. He, he wrote about yeah, work, and, food, he wrote about <laughs> physical, right? Yeah. And, I mean, that's what I call an overarching theme. Um, I talk about this in my work sometimes. Is you know, kind of this this broader idea that links together your various unrelated yeah. interests. So for him, it's like how to get from point A to point B um, with the fewest moving parts. You know, quick as quickly as possible. Um, you know, the 80, 20 rule, if you want to call it that. And he applies that to work. He applies that to, um, to health and fitness, and then he applies it to learning things. Um, so that's been his overarching theme. And I, I actually think that Tim is sort of 
probably going to reinvent himself and not be the four hour guy anymore, but yeah. we'll see. But, but yeah. That's cool. I like that the concept, the overarching theme. Like mm-hmm. for, for me, it's to inspire and empower. And it used to be, I would say, I my mission is to inspire and empower mu- musicians. And then I added writers and authors to it. Now it's I inspire and empower uh, musicians, writers, and creative entrepreneurs nice. <laughs> <laughs> to make a living and make a difference in the world. And so, yeah, yeah most of what I do is taps into that in some way, but in a variety. Right, and that ways. allows you to do many different projects because there's a lot of things you could do within that, that that accomplish that goal. Right, right. So that's a great point. I love it. Just three more questions to go. This has been fantastic. I knew that it would be. Uh, here's another question that I, it's uh, its really, it's really deep uh, perhaps, but uh, like what motivates you to do what you do on all these different things that you do? What's your big why that uh, com- compels you to do all this stuff? Um, so it's two things. So the first is that I think that we should all be who we are. Mm. And I think that in our culture, there's this tremendous pressure to, to be, you know, to kind of fit yourself into a box. Right. Um, and so I want people to, to see that there's nothing wrong with them for not being able to do that and that they're, you know, that this is a blessing, not a curse. Um, I want to help people live lives and, and have careers that are aligned with who they are inside, with how they're wired. So that's the first part. And the other part goes a little bit beyond that. So I actually think that multi-potentialites are the innovators of the future. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's it's people who can who have a lot of different interests and a lot of dots to connect. Um, people who can integrate unrelated things together and create something new at the intersection. Like I think that those are the people who are going to come up with new ideas, new creative concepts, or you know, solve some of the world's biggest problems. People who can think outside of those traditional kind of narrow paths um, and boundaries. That's fa- yeah, it's fantastic. So I, yeah, I'm sorry. Go go, know, go ahead. <laughs> so I think it's important for people to to embrace their many interests, not just for them, but for the rest of us. You know, I think that we're all going to benefit if people, if multi potentialites, feel like they can be themselves and that they can live their life this way. Yeah, that's obviously a, tapping into a bigger vision than maybe people will see on the surface. Oh, I just want to let people know they can do a bunch of different things right. and not have to focus on one, you know. But the way you describe it there is like, this is like a Martin Luther King, I have a dream kind of kind of thing. And it's true about what you said about the, the innovators. I, I was reading something about uh, the early days. I think there was some kind of an anniversary for a- Apple computers or the Macintosh mm-hmm. or something recently. And they're talking about the initial team of people and uh uh, oh no! The one guy's from Paul Allen's from Seattle. I guess they they just won the Super Bowl or something. Just, um, but they were talking about how there was a musician and there was a designer and like there are all these people that normally wouldn't go together. And it's because of that melding of those different perspectives that led to this innovative uh, com- computer company. So um, so yeah. yeah, I think. And I mean, Steve Jobs has there's a great great quote out there. Um, he says something about how creativity is just connecting things right and creative people don't really see how they did it and and maybe feel a little guilty but because it could see like it seemed obvious to them but it's really like having a bunch of different diverse experiences and making a connection between them and a connection that like other people haven't made or you know just doesn't seem like they go together and that's where the new ideas come from I love that. I love that the innovations of tomorrow are coming from the putty <laughs> community. <laughs> I like um, so yeah, obviously you've got a lot of stuff going on with puttylike.com, but what other, you, any future plans, anything, big projects around the corner for 2014 and beyond? Yeah. Um, so do you want to hear about uh, like putty-like related stuff and what, or outside? Okay. What, whatever you want to, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's in Emily's uh, near future here? Especially yeah, it's a big, so, hairy, audacious goal. With, even better. <laughs> yeah. um, so the main thing that I'm focusing on this year is writing a book. Oh, cool. Um, and I'm writing a book that's going to be called Multipotentialite, I think. I think I'm just going to go with something simple like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I, it's going to be like the kind of um, comprehensive guide to making this stuff work. So there'll be a section on work and career. There'll be a section on productivity. There'll be a section on confidence and on kind of overcoming some fears. And I'd like there to just be like a nice comprehensive meaty book that people can pick up. Um, so I'm working on that right now. Cool. Would um, that be uh, like, cause I know you have the, the one Renaissance, uh, Business, business book and that's just an e an ebook so available as a download. Will this be a paperback, this new one too, or will it be only I would like to get it in print, yeah. 
Yeah, um, it's really easy to do these these yeah. these days as someone who's done it many times. Yeah, maybe we can talk more about that another time because um, I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. So, so, um, but so yeah, cool. I'd love to have it in print. Um, and then, um, you know, there's some fun things like we've got a T-shirt that's going to come out soon, a multi-potentialite T-shirt, which I'm really excited about. It's really a uh, nice design. Um, what nice. else on the putty-like front? Um, do you, do you ever do like a live events with your community? Yeah. Uh, well, we've done we've done some meetups and stuff, and I've done a couple seminars when I was in Portland. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing speaking, and I'm getting more into that. So I'll, I'm, I've got a few things coming up, but I'll probably take a break while I finish writing the book and then do a lot of speaking right when the book comes out. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the plan. Um, and then outside of putty leg -like stuff, um, I'm taking a chemistry class right now <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> at a local community college. So that's new and fun. And, um, and I'm playing a little bit of music. So I, last year for the month of February of 2013, my friend and I, we had this crazy idea. We were like, let's go to LA let's rent an apartment and let's spend a month writing and recording an album because we've always wanted to do this. We used to play music together in college. Like, let's just do this. Right. So we did it. Um, and that album is actually out. You can find it at tip of the hat, the band.com. Okay. <laughs> tip of the hat, the, the band. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was just a really fun project kind of fulfilling this dream I've always had of actually putting out an album, like releasing something. Um, and we're going to do that again. We're, we're going to do it in May this year. Um, so she's going to come to Chicago and we're going to spend a month and you know, who knows, maybe it'll become an annual thing. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'll link to a lot of these things that we talk about the band, your, certainly your, your websites and the four hour work week and all that good stuff in the show notes. Um, that sounds ex exciting. Well, I would say yeah, one thing I would definitely expect from you for future plans would be variety. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, doing more yeah. of the same. Um, and then where, yeah, where's the best place for people to connect with you online or wherever you want to send them? To yeah, respond? just puttylike.com. That's P-U-T-T-Y-L-I-K-E.com. Uh, the home for multi-potentialites. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I think I was getting, it's, it's rolling off the tongue a little bit. I thought I was afraid it, it was going to box It comes. Me. Yeah. yeah, it comes. Um, we also, you can say multipod for short if you prefer. Multipod. Sometimes I use that. Yeah. Sounds very di digital in space age. Yeah, um, one of the, the putty peeps suggested that, so. Putty peeps. Oh, <laughs> you got all kinds of, <laughs> like Lady Gaga has her little monsters. I guess you got your putty peeps and, you know, so. <laughs> that's nice. I like inventing words. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 awesome. Well, Emily, I knew this would be a thrill, and it certainly was. Thank you for your time and for sharing your 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 message and making people who normally would feel out of place and weird feel a, that, that they're at at home having multiple interests. So I thank you for the work that you do in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for watching and listening, however you're consuming this, whether it's YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, or on the DIY Career Manifesto website. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment or something. Subscribe in some way, wherever you're <laughs> consuming this. Let us know what you think of uh, Emily's message. And uh, I'll be back again next week or so with another uh, interview. So, so long for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>